Okay then gang, so I'd like to show you just one more type of cloud function trigger because we've seen now an auth trigger, a callable function, and also the on request function. So I'm gonna show you one more and that is a Firestore trigger. So when something happens in a Firestore database, for example, when we create a new document. So let's create one more function. And by the way, I don't think I'm gonna link this up fully to the project. I think this is pretty much done. I'm just showing you this now to demo this extra kind of trigger. So I'll do a little comment right here and say Firestore trigger for Mm, tracking activity. So say we just want to track what people do. So if they sign up, then we're going to track that and we'll put that in an activities collection. Or if they make a new request down here, we'll track that activity and put that in the activities collection, something like that. So then let us now set up this Firestore trigger. So first of all, exports, and then we'll call this log activities. And we'll set this equal to functions and this time we say dot firestore because it's going to be a firestore trigger and we say dot document to give a path as to what we want to listen to so for example if we wanted to listen for documents being added to the requests collection we'd say forward slash requests and then forward slash and then id in curly braces this is basically a wild card meaning it could be anything because when we make a new document it's auto assigned an id so that's kind of like a variable in the path right here so if we attach to that now something like dot on create that means it's going to fire a callback function whenever a document is created inside this path so inside the requests collection now, if we wanted to listen for documents being created inside the users collection, we just replace that with users, like so. Okay, now what if we wanted to listen for every kind of document being added in every collection? Well, we could do something like this. Put collection in curly braces. Now, we don't have to call this collection, by the way. You can call it A if you want, but it makes sense because it is going to be a collection. Oops, we want the collection, like so. So... Now, what we can do is say, okay, anytime a document is created in any collection with any ID, then we wanna find this function. Now, inside this function, we get a couple of different arguments. We get the snap argument, which is basically a snapshot of the document which was created, so we can get data off that document, and also the context. Now, this is important because this context right here, this includes information about the path. So for example, if we added a new document to the requests collection, this function is gonna fire, right? Because it doesn't matter what collection that we add the document in, it's gonna fire. Now, if we want to find out what collection it was added to that document, then we can find that out from the context because we could say that the collection, if I say const collection is equal to the context, then we have a property called params for parameters and we want the collection parameter that's what we called this thing right here if we called that abc then this would be abc you get the idea right so we can grab any of these wildcards up here from the context dot params so let's change that back now to collection and we'll do the same thing for the id so we can get the reference to the id as well to be honest, we don't really need that, but just in case we do want it, we'll grab it. So const ID is equal to, and then it's context.params, and then it's gonna be the ID that we want. Okay, so we have those two values now. Now, if we wanted to, we could also do something with the data. We don't really need to, but just so you can see how to do this, I'm gonna console.log the snap.data. Remember, this is how we get data from a document, and that's all this is at the end of the day. This is basically a snapshot of the data or the document that we're creating here. So if we created a document inside the request collection, then we'd get that document right here and we can retrieve the data off it. And that's all we're logging to the console right here, which we'll see in the Firebase functions logs later on. Okay, so we've done that. Now, what I'd like to do is every time someone adds a new document to either the users or the requests collection, 
I would like to create a new document inside an activities collection. And that activities collection is basically tracking the activity of this website. And then in the future, if you wanted to subscribe to that activities collection from the front end to show notifications whenever something happens, for example, you can say, you know, someone new just signed up or another request was added to the list. Every time something happens, you could do that by subscribing to this activities collection because every time something happens, we're gonna add to that activities collection. So then let us now get a handle to the activities collection. Doesn't exist yet, but that doesn't matter, remember, because Firebase automatically creates it whenever we want to create our first document inside that collection. So we'll say const activities and set that equal to admin.firestore. And then we want to say dot collection. And the collection we want is the activities collection again doesn't exist yet but it will create it for us okay so now we want to check what kind of activity has happened has someone added something to the request collection or has a new user document been added to the users collection so we need to check that because our activity is going to be different dependent on that action so let's do a simple if check right here I'm going to say if and then in parentheses I'm going to say collection is triple equal to requests so if this thing right here that we grab from the path if that is requests that means that someone's added something to the requests collection so in that case i want to return activities which is this reference right here for the activities collection and then i want to add a document to that so i'll say dot add and then inside all i'm going to do is one parameter and the parameter is text and it's going to be a new tutorial request was added. Okay, so that's all there is to it. We're just adding a single document to the activities collection to say that a new request has been added because that's what's happened, right? A new document has been added to the requests collection. Okay, so that's that one done. I wanna do something similar, but this time I wanna do it for the users. So let me paste that right down here, change this to users and we'll say a new user signed up. So that's all we really need to do. At the end though, we still need another return statement because if there's other collections in the future which we're not really tracking in this way, we still need to return something if none of these pass right here. So we'll just return null right here because we don't really need a return value. So I'm gonna save that now and then I'll come over here and I'm going to deploy them by saying Firebase deploy only functions and then wait for this to deploy. Okay, looks like it's all done over here, but let me scoot over to our functions on Firebase and just a refresh just to make sure that it has been accepted over here. And there is one more, user.create. We can see that right here. So it is up there and now we can try to use it. Now, the way we use it is just by adding a new document to the database in either the users collection or into the requests collection because that's what's triggering the function right here. So let's just add a new request first of all. So let me go over here, add request, and what can this request be? View three, submit request, and let's wait for this to happen first of all. Okay, so that's worked. And if we go over to the database, if we refresh now, we should see a new collection called activities and it should have added one item to that collection, which it has. A new tutorial request was added. So it's tracked that and it's added it to this collection. Now let's try adding a new user. So if we go over here, sign out and then register, I'm gonna say Bowser at the net ninja.co.uk and then test one, two, three, and I'm gonna register and then this should hopefully add a new document to this collection. Might just have to refresh for this to pick up. Oops, I did see it just before I refreshed right there. And we can see now a new user signed up. So there we go, my friends. That is how we can react to Firestore activity, specifically the creation of new documents.